Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to present on the topic of myocarditis with COVID-19 infection and myocarditis with COVID-19 vaccinations. These are my disclosures. In the pre-COVID era, the common infectious etiologies for myocarditis included a variety of pathogens, including viruses such as adenovirus, Coxsackie, enteroviruses, HIV, but not the simple coronavirus causing cold. Then we learned quickly during the COVID era that COVID-19 infection itself can involve the heart. During the early phases of the pandemic, there was uh, many reports demonstrating cardiac involvement. The spectrum of acute cardiovascular presentations ranged from myocarditis-like presentation, acute inflammatory cardiomyopathy to heart failure and cardiogenic shock, as well as uh, thromboembolic complications such as pulmonary embolus, stroke, and myocardial infarction. The underlying mechanisms for these appear to be acute myocardial injury that was hypothesized to be related to a variety of causes such as cytokine storm, microvascular endothelial injury, thrombotic injury, increased myocardial demand due to the infection and hypoxemia, as well as direct infection of the cardiac myocytes. Uh, the prevalence of the uh, presence of cardiac injury uh, varied and ranged from 12% amongst the patients without known cardiovascular disease to 50% of the non-survivors and approximately 22% of the ICU patients. In comparison, prevalence of troponin I positivity in non-COVID acute viral infections historically has been approximately 1%. In a recent retrospective study published a few weeks ago, amongst 56,000 hospitalized patients with COVID-19 at 23 centers in Europe and US, the prevalence of definite or probable myocarditis amongst hospitalized patients with COVID-19 was approximately two to four per thousand hospitalizations. These patients were rather young with a mean age of 38, and some had a fulminant course requiring inotropic support or mechanical circuitry support in 40% of the cases. And we also now have evidence of post-COVID involvement of the heart. There is growing recognition of the long-term sequelae of COVID-19 infection, which usually is defined by symptoms such as fatigue, anxiety, depression, cognitive dysfunction, but can entail cardiac symptoms such as postural orthostatic, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome um, that can um, be persistent beyond four weeks. Though not commonly recognized as part of long COVID, there is growing recognition of subclinical cardiac involvement by imaging, such as cardiac MRI. In a study that gained a lot of attention, Putman and colleagues demonstrated that 78% of the patients had cardiovascular involvement detected by cardiac MRI approximately 70, day, 70 days following COVID-19 infection. This study created a lot of controversy and concerns about the athletes being able to return to work. In subsequent better designed studies with controls, the cardiac abnormality rate was uh, noted to be lower, approximately one to 3% of the athletes having evidence of myocarditis by MRI post mild or asymptomatic COVID-19 infection. These abnormalities though were seen despite the individuals being asymptomatic, having normal EKG or cardiac troponin or other Im imaging modalities. In the recently published American College of Cardiology Expert Consensus Decision Pathway, which I was a co-author, we provided a framework for evaluation for acute myocarditis and other myocardial involvement, as well as for post-acute sequelae of SARS-CoV-2 infection and the conceptualization for return to play. If we examine the cardiac injury mechanisms with SARS-CoV-2 infection, of what's happening to the heart, the direct infection of the cardiac myocytes has not been the predominant feature to explain the extent of myocardial injury. SARS-CoV-2 can enter the cardiac myocyte through ACE2 mediated entry and the subsequent viral replication can occur in the heart. Initial case reports were very supportive of acute viral myocarditis by clinical imaging and biomarker data there was evidence of SARS-CoV-2 in the heart when the RNA copies post-mortem were examined, though the levels were not as high as they were in the lung. But interestingly, despite clinical presentation of myocarditis, despite evidence of presence of the virus in the myocardium, 
in the autopsy or biopsy samples, there was not an evidence of fulminant lymphocytic myocarditis, which is the feature that we commonly expect in viral myocarditis cases. There were very few interstitial mononuclear inflammatory infiltrates, but not a fulminant myonecrosis or lymphocytic myocarditis. Despite the clinical presentation of myocarditis, the pathological specimens demonstrated low-grade myocardial inflammation, diffuse macrophage, but not lymphocytic infiltration, and absence of myonecrosis. Viral particles were found within interstitial cells in the myocardium, but not inside the cardiac myocytes. And they were also seen in the subendothelial compartment. Thus, the endothelium appears to be infected, and there is evidence of myocardial injury, perhaps through endothelial dysfunction. And now moving on to myocarditis related to COVID vaccination. In the general population, myocarditis is diagnosed in approximately 10 to 20 individuals per 100,000 individuals per year, and is seen more commonly in males at younger ages compared to females. Post-vaccination myocarditis has been historically reported following smallpox vaccination, influenza, hepatitis, or other vaccinations as a rare adverse event. In the pivotal efficacy and safety trials with COVID-19 vaccines, there were no reports of myocarditis. Adverse cardiovascular effects in these trials were isolated with incidences of less than 0.05%, and these cardiovascular complications did not include myocarditis. The early reports of vaccine-related myocarditis came from Israel, and included 148 cases of myocarditis amongst 10 million vaccine doses delivered. Majority were seen following the second dose among uh, men aged between the ages of 16 to 30, with the highest risk being between the ages of 15 to 19. Most cases were very mild, recovering in four days. These cases were, report, uh, were followed by case reports and case series again, predominantly in young males um, following the second dose of mRNA vaccines. After these reports, in June 2021, the CDC Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices was convened. They reviewed all the reported myocarditis cases in the CDC databases and concluded that the benefits of COVID-19 vaccination clearly outweighed the risks of myocarditis after vaccination. With these reports, we reviewed the literature, case reports, case series, as well as the CDC analysis and provided a comprehensive systematic review and summarized that most cases presented with chest pain two to three days after the second dose of the mRNA vaccination. Myocarditis following vaccination was seen predominantly in young males without prior history of COVID-19 or comorbidities. Those uh, individuals tested negative for current COVID-19 infection or other viruses such as Coxsackie or adenovirus or flu. Majority had evidence of spike antibody levels demonstrating effective immunization. Almost all had elevated cardiac troponin or CRP levels or EKG. MRI, cardiac MRI was abnormal when tested. And all had resolution of their symptoms and or signs and had evidence of improvement in diagnostic markers or imaging with or without treatment. Most were treated with NSAIDs, steroids, or colchicine. We also provided that the risk of vaccine-related myocarditis in the context of COVID-19 infection for all, for all age groups. As seen, COVID-19 infection-related hospitalizations and death far outweigh the risk of myocarditis after the second dose of mRNA COVID-19 vaccination by any age group. And COVID-19 infection-related hospitalization risk plotted on the left side highly exceeds that of the myocarditis risk related to the vaccine on the right side for each age group. These were confirmed in September 2021 with national scale data from Israel, which demonstrated that the myocarditis risk related to the infection itself was markedly higher than the risk of myocarditis with vaccination. And also keep in mind that the risk of myocardial infarction 
arrhythmia, pulmonary embolus, deep venous thrombosis, intracranial hemorrhage, risk is markedly higher with the infection, with the COVID-19 infection itself. And these are not increased with the vaccination. Subsequent publications from Israel reflected that the vaccine-related myocarditis was not restricted to mRNA vaccines alone. They also reported few cases related to adenoviral uh, vac vector vaccines. The rates with these were lower. The studies also implied that there was a dose risk gradient with the higher risk seen with the Moderna vaccine, which has a higher dose than Pfizer and the AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca adenoviral vaccines. The authors estimated extra two cases of myocarditis events with the Astra, AstraZeneca adenoviral va vector vaccine, one case with Pfizer, and six cases with the Moderna vaccine following the first dose, and extra 10 myocarditis cases uh, within 28 days following the second Moderna dose for every one million vaccination. The mechanisms implicated for COVID-19 uh, vaccine-related myocarditis are unknown, and they include the hypotheses of molecular mimicry between spike protein and self-antigens, dysregulated immune response among genetically predisposed individuals, autoantibody production against cardiac proteins, immunogenicity of RNA with the mRNA vaccines, and testosterone playing a role uh, with evidence that testosterone commits the body to a pro-inflammatory -inflam pathway. And there is evidence that SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoproteins and nucleoproteins cross-react with structurally similar human peptide protein sequences, including alpha myosin. So in summary, COVID-19 infection itself is associated with a variety of cardiovascular abnormalities ranging from myocardial injury, myocarditis, arrhythmia, pulmonary embolus, heart failure, cardiogenic shock, as well as sudden cardiac death. Acute cardiac injury with evidence of elevated troponin is seen in a significant proportion of patients. Post-COVID cardiac MRI abnormalities vary, but can be seen up to two to three months. Etiology of cardiac injury with COVID-19 is, is not exactly clear. Despite localization of SARS-CoV-2 to the myocardium, lymphocytic myocarditis is not common as expected. There is evidence, evidence of macrophages, inflammation, and cytokine surge, and evidence also of microvascular thrombi and endothelial injury as potential causes. Long-term cardiac effects of SARS-CoV-2 require further investigation. COVID vaccines are associated with an increased risk of myocarditis, but this risk is small, and it is seen especially in young males. Vaccine-related myocarditis is usually self-limited, mild, symptoms resolve within four to five days. Presentations usually include chest pain, EKG abnormality, cardiac troponin elevation, and cardiac MRI abnormality when tested. Management can vary depending on the symptoms. The benefits of vaccination outweigh the risks, including myocarditis related to COVID-19 vaccination. Thank you for your attention.